Tigray, located in the highlands of eastern Africa, was affected by centuries-long severe land degradation comprised of soil erosion, deforestation, declining biodiversity, and lack of soil moisture, attributed to the heavy population concentration in the highlands. People strive to increase food production with subsistence farming and by expanding farming on marginal land. Soil fertility was depleted, resulting in a decline in agricultural productivity. The drylands covered 40% of Tigray's earth before 1991. Drought would become recurrent and food security the norm. In 1985, famine had devastated millions of Tigrayans, leading to the death of over 1 million people. There's no point in fighting if the people are finished. This is the saddest time in my life. <laughs> Tigray was one of uh, the degraded sites in, the, in northern Ethiopia. Uh, agriculture has been in this part of uh, the country for more than 3,000 years. People were uh, uh, farming uh, for long years, and the increase in farmland is at the expense of uh, this forest. Addressing the challenges of land degradation was therefore not an issue that could be delayed any further. That's why in 1988, the Tigray People's Liberation Front and the Relief Society of Tigray with the assistance of donors launched its soil water conservation programs to mobilize communities across liberated areas in Tigray to address environmental challenges. After the downfall of the Derg and the establishment of the Federal Democratic Republic of Ethiopia in 1991, the country was led to a wide process of decentralization in which political, fiscal and administrative powers were reallocated to each of the country's nine regions and urban administrations. But TPLF's rural-based and environmentally friendly policies would expand nationally. The APRDF-led government of Ethiopia developed the agricultural development-led industrialization policy. The focus of Adli was not the same in all states. In 1994, Tigray adopted the conservation-based agricultural development-led industrialization strategy to respond to the region's food security and agricultural productivity challenge, based on rehabilitation, conservation, development of natural resources, and people's participation. I'm immensely proud to be able to speak today, not on behalf of my country, Ethiopia, but on behalf of Mother Africa as a whole. Nice to see you. Good to see you. you have been working so hard. <laughs> I'm very impressed. TPLF led efforts to reverse land degradation and rehabilitate the environment would be considered revolutionary. Chris Rage, a researcher with the World Resources Institute in Washington, would tell The Guardian the scale of restoration of degraded land in Tigray is possibly unmatched anywhere else in the world. The people may have moved more earth and stone in recent years to reshape the surface of their land than the Egyptians during thousands of years to build the pyramids. The concerted efforts towards land and soil conservation would receive worldwide acclaim. Abrahat Baha District in Tigray would receive the Equator Prize in 2012 for restoration of the environment. A Bahawi, an exemplary farmer that received the Equator Award, is a village chief of Abrahawat's Baha vicinity in Tigray. In an interview he had with Center for International Forestry Research, C4, he described how difficult it was to transform the dry land into a green area. I didn't imagine this would be possible. It was very dry and degraded. I feel proud. Now that I'm successful in this village, I want to replicate these practices across the country. In September 2017, the World Future Policy Gold Award was given to the people of Tigray for efforts to restore land on a massive scale. Yet in 1960s, Tigray's soil water conservation programs were essentially absent and land degradation was rampant. The situation would change for areas about 1,800 meter sea level in the Hausi Doga and Doga agroecological belts. <laughs> Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, this year's Gold Award goes to Africa, the continent most severely impacted by land degradation. Ethiopia's Tigray region has made remarkable progress in restoring degraded land and improving food and water security. For its mass mobilization of people and its outstanding achievements under harsh conditions, Tigray's policy is celebrated with the Future Policy Gold Award 2000.
17. The implementation of Adli Integrise efficiently enhanced by mass mobilization campaigns that promote the use of voluntary labor to create productive assets and the youth responsive land policy that gives legal land holding certificates and extension support to landless youth. The government of Tigray mobilized villagers to volunteer 20 days a year to build terraces, irrigation projects, build stone walls on mountains and hillsides, and other projects. The Soil and Water Conservation Program emphasized the importance of community involvement at all levels, including problem identification, planning, implementation, and evaluation. As a result, groundwater levels have risen, soil erosion has been reduced, and people's ability to grow food and gain an income has improved. During the climate summit in New York in 2014, the country committed itself to managing 15 million hectares of degraded land to be rehabilitated by 2025. For its remarkable achievements in participatory land restoration, Tigray's policy won the Future Policy Award in 2017, which is the only award which honors policies rather than people on an international level. While China and Brazil won silver award, countries such as Australia, Jordan and Niger won bronze award for their policies and efforts to protect the environment. The Future Policy scorecard included the fact that foster sustainability livelihoods, women were 40% of the public that participated in its introduction to the youth responsive land policy which helped reduce unemployment amongst young people. Widespread mobilization of the local population also ensured the implementation of the policy. The policy also set up agricultural extension services and farmers training centers. Demonstration centers were established in order to train farmers in soil and water conservation techniques. Food aid was used as a source of motivation for soil and water conservation activities. The area of land that were traced between 1988 and 1995 in Tigray amounted to approximately 418,500 hectares. This massive investment to address environmental degradation in Tigray would pay off with the restoration of degraded mountains, landscapes, and improvements of living conditions of farmers across the region. The once poverty-stricken region became a symbol of change. Restoration and improvement for life conditions of its population as its impacts of drought on livelihood of farmers were significantly reduced. TPLF's chairman and Ethiopia's Prime Minister Mella Zenawi would later represent the African voice at Copenhagen in 2009 when the world would come together to discuss the issues of climate and global warming and the issues of funding for green energy. The risk of catastrophic climate change is very real. The science is as clear as it could ever be as to what the cause of such change are. It is no exaggeration to say that this is our best and perhaps our last chance to save our planet from destructive and unpredictable change. If we fail to rise above the current challenge of climate change, we will then have proved that global economic progress is based on a fundamentally dysfunctional global political system. What is at stake here is the future of our species, the future of human civilization as we have come to know it. Africa is keenly aware of the significance of climate change negotiations and the Copenhagen summit. That is why, for the first time since the establishment of the Organization of the African Union, Africa has decided to speak with one voice and to field a single negotiating team mandated to negotiate on behalf of all the member states of the African Union. But since Abiy Ahmed's ascendance to power, Ethiopia's policies towards environmental conservation has become rather unclear and appears to be focused on attracting public attention rather than putting in effort to contribute towards a cleaner and safe environment. Once a leading force in policy and conservation and climate change, Ethiopia's name has now instead become synonymous with violence and destruction amounting to genocide.